experiment AC, like uh, experiment number 17, you can see um, band pass filters as well, but we are not doing that. Okay, so what are the passive filters, okay? Uh, passive filters are the filters that actually compose of RLC components. And these type of filters are used in many uh, applications like audio applications. Uh, if you have to refine the voice, if you have to increase a certain frequency or purify the voice, these filters can be used. So what are the types of passive filters? So they reject attenuate signals at various frequencies. Um, common type of filters are low pass filters. Low power filters are what? They deliver low frequencies and eliminate high frequencies. High pass filters, they, uh, they are opposite to low pass filters. They send high frequency and reject low frequencies. Band pass filters, these filters, as their name suggests, that they pass certain band of the frequency. Like they pass some particular range of frequencies and discard other frequencies which are not in that band. Band rejection filters are those uh, filters that pass all frequencies except the band uh, that is defined as uh, the band where they should not pass the frequencies. So they are called band stop filters are also called as notch filters. So these are four types of passive filters. We will be focusing on first two types. So if you see here, these are body plots of uh, common filters. Uh, so you can see that if this is your gain, then low pass filters uh, pass certain frequencies and eliminate other frequencies. Similarly, band pass filters uh, pass the frequencies which are in their band and eliminate other frequencies. Similarly, high pass filters and band rejection filters. So um, in the filters, uh, the, the thing that is most important is the transfer function, which is um, output voltage divided by input voltage. So um, that defines that, what is the transfer function? As you know that in when there is a storage device like the capacitor inductor, it will be a complex value, it will have phase and magnitude. So that's why AJ Omega has the phase and magnitude in it. Okay, so now coming to the point, passive filters, our L, uh, use RLC elements to achieve the desired filter. The half power frequency is the same as the, so, okay. So there is one quantity that is very important in a uh, passive filter that is half power frequency or cutoff frequency. Now the cutoff frequency is what? It says that where the magnitude is one by square root of two of its maximum value. So that is defined as cutoff frequencies. So normally filters are defined based on their cutoff frequencies or designed using their cutoff frequencies. So the resonant frequency is referred to as the center frequencies. I think resonant frequency is important for band pass or band stop filters, okay? So these are two types of filters we will be focusing on, okay? So this type of filter, one uh, type of filter is um, uh, low pass filter and high pass filter, but there are two types of circuit. You can see RC and RL. What is RC? So if you have this circuit in uh, like, and you are measuring output voltage here, right? And uh, then your filter will be called as low pass filter. If you are measuring your voltage here, then your filter will be high pass filter. How it will work, we will see that, okay? Similarly for RL, it's opposite. If you are measuring voltage in inductor, then it will be high pass filter. And if you are measuring voltage in resistor, that will be low pass filter. So that's why this these are the circuits we will be focusing on today. Okay, so what it's saying, like it's, it's describing another way of this, that capacitive reactants, as the frequency applied to the capacitor increases, its effect, its effect is to decrease its reactance because as the frequency increases, its reactance decreases, right? Likewise, as the frequency across the cap capacitor decrease, its reactance increase. So you can see that 
low pass at DC zero frequency. So when your frequency decrease, its reactance increase and it will act as an open circuit. For high uh, frequency, it will act, act as, a, as a short circuit. So, um, so if you measure the voltage across capacitor, it will pass low frequencies and uh, block high frequencies. So let's see how it will work. Similarly, uh, if you see here, as frequency increases, its uh, XL increases, and as frequency decreases, its XL decreases. So the inductor offers low resistance, so low frequencies pass. So let's see how it will work, how this phenomena will work in our filters, okay? So this is one of the circuit, I think, one minute, I need to adjust it a little bit. Uh, okay. You can see now? Yeah. Okay, so this is the high pass filter we are talking about. High pass filter means that you are measuring voltage here. So how it will work as high pass, we will see that. What it, how, uh, how its tr uh, transfer function will work is like that, that V naught over VI you are taking. V naught is R and VI is, or you can also see that this is uh, actually a voltage division rule you're applying like you are measuring voltage R divided by the voltage bo uh, across both of them. So that's what you are doing R plus divided by the resist uh, re uh, impedance across both of them, R plus one over J omega C multiplied by VI will be your V naught. So it's kind of the voltage division rule you have applied here. Uh, moving your J above, it will become minus J over omega R C taking this R here. Now, if you see this uh, this term again, this term again, what they have done, they move J up and say that this is XC. So if you tr uh, try to uh, find the magnitude, its magnitude is this and its angle is this, right? So if you have to find the magnitude of V naught over VI, you will calculate using this formula. Can you see my mouse? Yeah. You can use uh, using this formula and the phase can be determined using this formula. So this formula is V naught over VI. Now the cutoff frequency, which we have seen, say that the, at the cutoff frequency, you will see one over square root of two magnitude. So when it will occur, when your R is equals to XC, this will become 2R square and R will come out, R will cancel with R and it will become one over square root of two. So at R is equals to XC, you will see a cutoff frequency here. So, so if you want to design a filter, you will say that FC is, uh, because R is equals to XC, which every XC is one over two pi FC. So FC, cutoff frequency can be designed using RC. So it is dependent on the design values of RC, which will determine its cutoff frequency. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so we will see that too. So let's see, okay. Uh, So first of all, let's see in your book that in the book, you, you will see procedure one, okay? So in procedure one, you have uh, a circuit 
where you are seeing a uh, capacitor and the same circuit that I am showing you, right? So in the circuit, you have 1K resistor and the capacitor. Then you will uh, write an equation for V0 in terms of VI, which will be V0 by VI. Uh, let me just confirm. And then you will uh, establish ratio V0 over VI in uh, phase and magnitude form, which is this one, which I have already written here. This thing, okay? And then uh, V0 over VI, you will show what it will be equal to, which is this. And then the condition R is equal to XC establishes the low cutoff frequency. Write an equation for the frequency that establishes this condition, which is this one. And then using the preceding equation and the measured resistor value, solve for the low cutoff frequency. Let's solve for the low cutoff frequency for these values. Like your R is equal to one kilo ohm and your C is equal to 0.1 microfarad. So putting these value here, right? It will give your FC is equals to what? If you put R is equals to one kilo ohm and C is equals to 0.1 microfarad, your FC is what? I need to check one minute. So your FC should come as 1.4 kilohertz, okay? So if you use these values of R and C, your FC is 1.4 kilohertz, means that 1.4 kilohertz is the frequency at which its magnitude, uh, V naught over VI's magnitude will be one over square root of two, okay? So we will confirm that too. But first we need to see what it means to have a high pass filter. High pass filter means that it passes the higher frequencies, right? So you can see the table here starts from 0.1 kilohertz and end at 100 kilohertz. So it means that if it is a high pass filter, it should pass frequencies after 1.4 kilohertz, right? So let's see that in our LT spice. You understand what I'm saying? Is there any confusion? No, it's all making sense. Okay, let's let's share LT spice and then we will make more sense about that. Okay. Mm. Let me No, this is not LT spice. Okay, so this is my LT spice. This is an old circuit, but I want to make it such that, that it should act, act like a uh, high pass filter. So I, I want to switch their positions. So let me do that. Okay. 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 So my capacitor should be here and my resistor should be here. And let's see. So they ask us to maintain eight volt peak to peak at input voltage, right? So I, that's why I put it here four volts and then we should start from uh, which value? 0.1 kilohertz, I think. I need to just confirm. Yes, 0.1 kilohertz, four volt and R is um, one kilo ohms and C is 0.1 microfarad. So by putting these values in, 
I am making sure that um, this is a high pass filter because I will be uh, measuring the voltage here at R, okay? So let's try. So high pass filter means that it should pass frequencies after 1.4 kilohertz. Like um, before that, it should have uh, uh, what you should say um, pass minimal frequencies, okay? So let's see. So you can see that V and 002, I should label that maybe. Not here. We are. Right? And try doing that. Again. So this is, so right now what you wanna do here, this is your V naught, the black line is your V naught and uh, a blue line is your V1, right? So when your V1 is four volts, uh, one, one minute. When your V1 is uh, uh, four volts, what is the value of VR? the maximum value of VR that you will write, okay? Okay. Uh, is this my server? Yes. So it's 250 millivolts, something like that. So that is my output voltage, right? So just one minute. Yes. So that's how you will measure your output voltage, which was, let me check again. Two fifty millivolts, right? the maximum value of its output voltage is 250 millivolts. And when you are taking peak to peak value, you will take as um, 500 millivolts, right? So I am talking about 17.2. So 0 0.1 kilohertz is giving you V naught peak to peak as 500 millivolts, right? Yeah. Yes. So you will fill that in 500 millivolts. AV will be V naught peak to peak divided by VI peak to peak. You will write 500 millivolts by eight, right? Right. So that should be 0 0.063. AV um, will come as like that. Okay. Now what is AV? AV is V naught peak to peak over VI peak to peak. And that's what we are drawing it at graph 17.1. Okay, so it means that what I'm talking about that at 1.45 kilohertz, AV should be near 0 0.707. Okay, sounds good? Yeah, yeah. sounds good. So let's try 1.45 uh, 1 kilohertz, okay? Before that, I'm just showing you how it increases its value. Uh, let's try first maybe 0 0.5 kilohertz. So now you will write, uh, I, I think it's approximately one volts. One point one nine, right? For one point one nine into two, divided by eight. So that will be your uh, value at 0 0.5 kilohertz. Uh, you will fill that in in 17 point. Sounds good? Yeah. So the VO, is that just the the regular voltage or that's the peak to peak that we're filling in? Like peak in this case, would it be 1.19 times two? Yes, that okay. you will uh, be filling the peak to peak value at in table 17.2, yes. 
ओके साउंड गुड सो यू हैव 1.19 यू विल मल्टीप्लाई इट बाय 2 एंड देन यू कैन फिल इट इन इन द 17.2 बिकॉज़ इट हैज पी पी इन इट ओके okay so now i will show what we whether we are getting av is equal to 2.707 or not at 1.45 okay so this is my cursor which is at points uh, 2.61 multiply by 2 will be what I think so 2. 5.22 5.2 to divide by 8 0.65 Zero point six five, right? So it will be maybe one minute. Let's try again. It's it's near two point seven, but we need to try it again. One minute. I should change maybe. Let's see more clearer. Okay. Okay. Now see that. Mm. Two point six eight multiply by two. Five point three six. Five point three six by eight. Zero point six seven. Point six seven. Okay, it's near to point seven, but let's try a little bit. Let's try one point four seven. Okay, here. Two point seven zero multiplied by two. Five point four divided by mm, divided by eight. Zero point six seven five. Okay. Two point seven four divided multiply by two divided by eight. Zero point six eight five. Okay, so what I'm trying to say that you will find the frequency at which you are getting a v is equal to point seven zero seven. Okay, and then you will say that this is the frequency simulated cutoff frequency. Okay, your calculated cutoff frequency is one point four. Five, but your simulated is something you are seeing one point five or something like that. Okay, sounds good. Yes. And your graph should look like what we have seen, like this, um, like this V naught over V I, which you are seeing in the t uh, in the um, slide ten. So your your graph should look like this. 
let me share it again. So your graph should look like this, in which this point should be 1.5, whatever you are seeing here. This 0 0.707 is your cutoff frequency. Other than that, this pass band uh, has the increased number of like um, show it will show you that it passes the frequencies after that. Let's try some really high frequency and we see that uh, the signal should not be attenuated at higher frequency. Okay, so let's see a frequency of uh, um, like we have here 60 kilohertz. Maybe I should do. So you can see that at higher frequency, the signal is not attenuating at all. So V naught over VI is almost one, right? Yeah, so that's why you should see that graph that we are seeing here um, when we will be um, plotting that. This graph, because at higher frequency, you can see that your V naught over VI is becoming one. Sounds good? Sounds good. Okay, so this is the high pass filter which is letting uh, high frequencies pass, okay? Um, so in this, uh, one more thing is there. If you, if you see the G part, G part is saying calculate the phase angle of V naught over VI using equation derived in part 1B at the frequencies appearing in table 17.3. So, Part 1B is this, which I'm showing this one is the part 1B where this should be the, the angle of your um, phase angle of your um, circuit. So you can just calculate these uh, values and put it in the 17.3. So let's see if you will see that um, frequent uh, like, like um, when your XC is equals to XR, then you will have one here, right? Yeah. So tan inverse one will be? Forty-five, I think. What? Is it forty-five degrees? Yes. So tan inverse one will be forty-five. So it means that at cutoff frequency, um, and the phase angle should be 45 degrees, right? So just make this sense and you need to fill, fill the 17.3 table and I will show you how it should look like. Just a minute. I think this is a low pass, one minute, or this is the fine. No, this is fine. So this is your phase, phase graph should look like, like this is your you know, 45 degree angle. And that's, that's the, that it should be looking like, this is minus 45 and minus 90 because it's for low pass, but for high pass, these these should be uh, plus angles, okay? So that's the but the but the graph uh, will be same. So that's how your your graph should look like. Now we go towards the. Uh, can you see my screen, right? 
Yeah, yeah we can yeah. see it. Okay, now let's move to the low pass filter. So low pass filter means that it will pass low frequencies. Uh, it will pass low frequencies and it will not pass high frequencies, okay? And in the low pass filter, you will take the voltage across capacitor. So, um, So it, it, this uh, this is this little bit description why it's uh, transfer. You can see that transfer function is maximum when denominator is smallest. So this is maximum when your omega is zero, right? So that's why um, that's why it's passing the low frequencies. And uh, uh, these circuits allow low frequency signals to pass through while blocking high frequency signal. And um, low frequencies means frequencies which are lower than cut off frequencies. Sounds good? Yeah. Yep. And similarly, if you see the transfer function here, in this case, if your frequency is decreasing, if your, uh, this, if this is zero, uh, if, uh, or you can see here, I think. If your omega is zero here, this is max. Uh, this will become infinity, right? If your omega is zero here. Right? So which will make your H over omega approximately very, very low or we can also solve it like this to to yes if you if you multiply this here and it will come up as well then it it will make sense then when your omega will be zero your transfer function will also be zero right what i'm trying to say here is I can mm, write it like this. Mm. What? It's not writing it at all. Oh. Mm. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is, so you can write this as omega RC minus J omega RC. Right? Yes. Yes, right? I think so. Because this, you can take the LCM of this, this omega RC can come there. And then as this is in the denominator, this can become going into the numerator. What I am writing is this, just to show that when your omega is zero, your transfer function is zero. When your omega is maximum, your transfer function is maximum. So it is directly proportional to the frequency, but not in this case, okay? In this case, this is a low pass filter. Low pass filter means that it passes only low frequencies. So let's see uh, whether it will work or not. Okay, so one more thing is, so you are not supposed to do part two, part three, and part four. But you uh, want, I want you to do um, high pass and low pass filter and repeat the same procedure that you are doing in part one. Okay? Okay, that works. Okay, let's see. Um, I'll show you this, this one as well. Uh, I will show the LT spice. So in LT spice, for 
this is a high pass filter for low pass filter i will switch their place, places why i have to switch their places because i cannot uh, measure the voltage across this right so wait so just to clarify real quick so in the um in the powerpoint you posted procedure two has an inductor so we're not doing that right we're just going to be doing no, no, we will be doing inductor two. I will show you. So I'm saying okay. so procedure one has two parts. One in one, you have to do high pass filter. In one other, you have to do low pass filter, okay? Okay. I am doing again the same thing, one minute. And then in the procedure two, you will be doing inductors. Okay, so low pass filter I have to do. What? One minute, I have to see. So it should have capacitor and resistor. Okay. So this is the resistor it should have, and this is the capacitor it should have. Okay. Okay. So Let's try, as it is a low pass filter, it has the same values, 1K and 0 0.1 microfarad. Okay. Mm. Okay, so let's see. If it is a low pass filter, it should not pass high frequencies, right? Right. So it works for us, right? Yep, that looks about right. Okay. Now, uh, one more thing I want to show you in the slides. Um, so if this is a low pass filter at R is equals to XC, it's cutoff frequency is same as uh, the high pass filter, but uh, it's the opposite thing that it should have 0 0.707 value at cutoff frequencies, but uh, after that it will be decreasing. So we saw 60 kilohertz. We will see um, at about this 1.5-ish how it will work. Okay, so let me change frequency to one point five kilohertz and So you can see that now it's showing some uh, values. So at 1.5, it's showing 2.88, which should be approximately 0 0.6, 0 2.9, which should be approximately near 2.707, okay? So this is its cutoff frequency. But after that, it should pass signal with the high magnitude so let's me let me change it to 0 0.5 kilohertz so you can see that it started passing so it should be av should be approximately one in that this scenario so your graph should look like this, okay? Sounds good? Sounds good. Yep. Okay. Now I'm moving towards inductor. Why am I 
slides are not moving. Okay, uh, let me share them again. Okay, so now we have done this thing and I am moving towards inductor. So you can see that in the inductor, it should be the same procedure you should follow, but it's opposite like previously, across resistor you were seeing high pass but here in inductor you will see low pass across resistor and similarly high pass across filter you will follow the same procedure just your frequencies will be changed your um one more thing here is that your fc formula is changed here if your xl is equals to r it will be 2 pi fl is equals to r your fc will become r over 2 pi l instead of the mm, one over two pi FC. So the values I, I ask you to use is one milli Henry and hundred ohms. So for that, if you calculate your FC, mm, that will be um, hundred divided by one milli Henry, right? Yes. So hundred divided by two pi into one milli Henry, and I think it should be some somewhere about. Let me check. It's 159. So two into pi, pi, where is pi? Pi into 10, right? 10 or one? One, okay, sorry. 2 into pi into 1, uh, inverse into 100. So it, hmm. so it's 15.9 into 1000 because it's milli Henry, right? So it's approximately 15.9 kilohertz, okay? So it means that after 15.9 kilohertz, your, your, that, that is your cutoff frequency. Sounds good? Yep. So that's why, but we, we will see um, change in that. And that's, you have to follow the same procedure that you will be doing for the capacitor. You will follow the same procedure for inductor two. Uh, where, is the, where is the, yeah. So that's, that's for today's experiment. Other than that, I just wanted to show you one more thing, which we are not doing, but uh, just to show you. So if you have second order filters, like second order filters, which has two energy storage elements, then in that case, if you measure the voltage across capacitor and inductor, it will become band reject. If you uh, measure the voltage across only resistor, it will become band pass. And if you measure the voltage across capacitor, it will become low pass. And if you measure the voltage across inductor, it will become high pass. So as from in, in one second order filter circuit, you can get all types of filters. We of course are not doing that. I'm just introducing it, but we will be just doing low pass and high pass filters. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so for the inductor, where we go only up to the I guess like 16 kilohertz then since the cutoff is 15 or do we still go up to 100 kilohertz? Yeah, so what I, I want you to do from 0 0.1 to 100 kilohertz because that give you idea how it's behaving for a large range of frequencies. Okay. Okay, what my, I was telling you about to tell you is that this lab is not due on 20th. This lab 
um, will be due in Thanksgiving break, maybe 27th. Uh, so you will have ample time to, you know, dig into it and ask questions. Other lab, uh, I think uh, first is your last lab, right? Which one, eight or nine? What? Eight or nine. Eight or nine what? The, the lab, which, which one are you talking about? No, I'm saying that this lab will be due in Thanksgiving break, but the other labs are due on 20th, right? Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. No, but I was asking that your last lab is uh, on first, right? Because, no, on fourth. Fourth is the date in which your, your exam is due or something like that. Okay, let me check. Um, the pause says that the final exam for the lab is like, uh, it's, it's, it's like a Monday or something. But it's, yeah, what I, I was looked trying earlier to... today and I think I saw the 14th. Yes. 14th? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's wrong because you're saying a little earlier, but. Because I am thinking saying. that that will be the date whenever they are saying your exam date is that will be the date you will be supposed to submit your projects. Okay. Which I will be giving you if it is 14th, if it is 4th, whatever it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I will be posting before Thanksgiving break that I, I said, and um, uh, and then you will have the whole break, or if that says 14, then even you have the two weeks to solve that, okay? And that is our final, Wait, right? What are you posting? So this is the last lab I've, I'm doing, okay? J just a minute, let me connect the charger, and then I'm coming back again, one minute. Yes, go ahead. What are you saying? Hello, what's the question? Yeah, so, okay, so lab eight's due on the 20th. So when is lab nine due again? All labs except this lab will be due on 20th. Except this lab. Oh, okay. That's what I said. And like, yes? do we have, do we have any other assignments for, for this class besides those three labs? No, you will have just the project or the final lab. Let me just quickly check the your lab exam date. So you are L3. Yes, it's 14th, okay? Monday 14th. So you will submit your project on 14th, okay? And that project is like our final exam, right? Yes, that will be your final exam. All right, cool, thank you. So this is the last lab, that's what I was saying. This is the last lab that will be due during the Thanksgiving break. And um, uh, I, I may be having another lab session to guide you how to do the project. Um, uh, so I will, I will let you know when we will have that session, okay? Okay, sounds good. Would the final project be due the 14th at midnight or at like 2 p.m., one hour? So um, you will do at last time, at last day? No, I mean, I'm just asking. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I, I, it doesn't matter. I, I think uh, the whole day you can have, yeah. All right, thanks. Okay. So I will have one more session I told uh, to uh, for the last lab, and then that's it about uh, all the labs. Okay? Sounds good? Yeah, sounds great. Yes. So what I'm trying to say, so if you have questions regarding this lab, you can either fix an appointment or you can ask me the last session we will be having before the submission of the project, okay?
but then it will be your late submission or whatever. But it's better if you if you have the appointment other than that. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. I'm here if you have questions uh, regarding the previous lab as well. So, Gina, I think you have had the question. So, uh, you can uh, join me after this lab, okay? Okay, thanks. Any other? I also person? have a question about the circuit for the last lab, too. Okay, okay yes. I mm -hmm. Michelle, you want to ask? Um, um, at the end. Um, yeah, so I keep trying to make the um, inverting. Um, maybe it's a non 